All right, so I'm going to follow Lynn back because she is apparently trying to put the skeleton back together again or something. I'm not entirely sure. So if you put it back together, you think it'll fly again? It might eat. <laughs> So we're here at Hunting Island now, and Hunting Island is only like 20 miles from where we live, but you never go close to home, and we decided we're just going to take a couple of days, and I, I'm not supposed to say ditch the kids, but um, we ditched the kids. So <laughs> we're going to spend just a couple of days here, and we're going to do some photography, we're going to do some night photography, and some other stuff, and just enjoy ourselves. So Hunting Island is a really cool place because it's it's a wild beach. It's um, there's forest right behind it, and there's there's deer and there's raccoons and even a couple of alligators. If you go over by the visitor center, there's actually a couple of alligators there. There's a lighthouse that you can there is climb a lighthouse. On, yep. Um, that has quite a quite a bit of history that's interesting. To if you decide to climb it, it's not that bad of a climb. And I think it's the only lighthouse on the east coast that you can actually climb up to the top in. But anyway, so I'm gonna give a little bit of instruction on this this trip and uh, hopefully get some really great pictures. Anything you want to do? Relax. Relax? Okay. Yes. There's our attempt to get a campfire going. I think that's going pretty well. I think so too. One match, was it? One match. One match and a bunch of palm fronds. Good with just the, the bench. Wow. That really got going. Okay. Where'd he go? He left. Oh, so he's, he's a, oh, here he comes. He's coming back around. Wow. Well, so what are you looking for there? What'd you find? Just going to come over to say hello. Look at this guy. Look, I got nothing for you. What the heck? Are you, I mean, are you serious? All right, got some super noisy, grainy video here. I apologize for that, but it is pitch black right now. And I came out to do, here to do some night photography. And uh, we only got here a few hours ago, so we didn't have a lot of time to do any scouting. Night photography doesn't really start at night. It starts during the day when you go and scout a good location. And I didn't really have time to do that, but we've got some time before bedtime. So I'm gonna try to get a few shots here and um, see what I get. You know, the cool thing is a lot of times you don't even know what you're going to get until after you've taken the picture and uh, those streaking clouds going by were really cool. I didn't see those before, obviously, because you can't... The sky is pretty black right now. Um, if you're taking 
night exposures and you've got stars in the picture, you want to keep your exposure generally under, under 30 seconds unless you want to have star trails going across the sky. Because if you do more than 30 seconds, the points of light that the stars are start to turn into streaks of light. So if that's what you're going for, great. But um, if you want to just have the stars look like stars, keep it under 30 seconds. All right, so now I'm going to try something a little different. I'm going to see how still I can stay, because I'm going to have myself in the picture, and I'm going to try to do about a 30-second exposure. We'll see what happens. Tell you what, the sunrises don't get any better than this. There's the sun. You know, one of the really cool things about Hunting Island is all the erosion that's happened here. It's a barrier island that's really prone to being damaged by hurricanes and and tides. Well, good morning. <laughs> Are you hiding? Yeah. How'd you sleep? I slept fine. Oh, that's good. <laughs> I'll get you some coffee in just a minute here. So we just found a pelican skull. Our youngest daughter just loves skulls, so she's sending the picture to her. Um, okay. What else did you find? There's, this is connected still. Like there's the ball and joint. Uh-huh. And it's still connected. Wow, and you can see the little, this is, yeah, from the wing, the different bones. This is my, this is my wife, the teacher, 100%. You can see all the joints right there still connected and how they would function. Yep. That is so cool. Should we uh, should we pull the wishbone? Sure. <laughs> all right, ready? Okay. No, just a second. I oh, gotta we got to make wish. a wish. Okay. That's the point of a wishbone. All right, I suppose. All right, ready? Okay. Oh, I win. You win. <laughs> Yay. How many people can say they made a wish on a pelican's wishbone? <laughs> <laughs> All right, so I'm going to follow Lynn back because she is apparently trying to put the skeleton back together again or something. I'm not entirely sure, but we're going to find out in a minute. So are you, are you like putting the skeleton back together? Is that what your goal is here? No, I thought I found the jaw. It's not the jaw. This is like a pelvis. Oh, yeah, that's the, that's the, the sternum. The pelvis, kind of. Right. That's not what that is. I was looking to find the bottom and then put it together. Oh. Okay. But it would make 
sense that it would be over here with this. But this is I think those is. two, well, that's a leg bone. okay, that's that a wing. Yeah, wing, whatever. Yeah. There isn't the, the rest of the jaw. Is, is this I it maybe? Guess. I bet that's half of it. Because it's going to be really thin because it has a, a membrane between it. Yeah, that is it. Yep. And this is the other. So there you go. So if you put it back together, you think it'll fly again? It might eat. <laughs> So we're enjoying ourselves at Hunting Island here today, and uh, it's the middle of the day now, and I'm going to do something a little bit different today. I had a camera converted over to infrared photography uh, a number of years ago, and I haven't used it in quite a while. So I'm going to go out and do that today because um, in the middle of the day when, when the light is really harsh and it's not really good for normal photography, infrared is actually best because the harsher the light, um, the better it turns out. And if you don't know what infrared photography is, you've got the visible spectrum, that's what your eye sees, you know, all the colors of the rainbow. But outside of that visible spectrum, there's, there's other light that our eyes are not able to, to uh, well, to see or to comprehend. And when they build a digital camera, they actually have to put a filter on the front of the sensor that keeps, keeps infrared light from showing up on the sensor because it makes your picture look kind of weird. Um, but I sent my camera in to have that converted so actually that kind of wavelength is what shows up on the camera. And it makes for a really cool look. It's great for landscape shots, especially on a sunny day. Um, infrared light reflects differently than normal visible light does, especially off of leaves, off of water, off of clouds. And so you're going to see that in some of the pictures I'm taking here. So I'm going to go do that now. So night photography doesn't happen just at nighttime. You also have to go out and scout where you're going to take your pictures because uh, once night comes around, you usually can't really see what your composition is going to look like until you actually take the picture. So it's a good idea to have some idea beforehand of what it is you're going to shoot. And I think if I can get out here this evening, or the, tonight rather, um, with a bike, I'm going to go ahead and do it even though it's quite a long way from where our campsite is. But uh, yeah, we'll see. I like it. Well, our last morning here, a gorgeous morning.
All right, folks, well, that's it for Hunting Island. We'll be wrapping things up now, and we'll catch you on our next adventure. Again, if you like this video, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe, and we'll be bringing you more of our adventures in the future. Thanks a lot.